What's up creators and welcome back to the Let's Create series where we work on a time tracker app. In today's episode we're going to finish working on the login page so we can get the design matching what we have in Adobe XD. And so this is going to include things like the width of the stack layout that the entries are in as well as the buttons. We're going to add those buttons and we're going to apply some default styles to them including the text and font. I'm looking forward to getting into the rest of the designs here. So before we can do that, the first thing we have to do is finish this login page. So let's get into it. Now that we have those animated entries pretty much done, minus some margins on the sides, we're gonna have to hit. Uh, but other than that, um, those entries look pretty good. And so now we need another button for forgot password, a login button and a use phone number button. If we look over here in our views folder, uh, we'll see that we do have a bindable button already. And this button, we can give it a default font family. So if we open up fonts, we could start with just the Nunito regular. So let's go ahead and set the font family here, which will just be a default font family, which we can change later uh, per usage of the button. Uh, but for now, we'll do font family is Nunito regular. And we can leave off the file extension. If we take a look at our designs, let's see what most of our buttons are going to look like. Uh, just by a quick glance, it looks like this login button is going to be the most common button we have. So scrolling around, we can see that that does seem to be the case. The only other buttons that I think we have are um, basically the no background and white text. So like uh, forgot password and use phone number. So let's default to this button to have a white background and the gradient end text color. So under the font family, we can set the background color to white is fine. And then most of these buttons are going to be the same. So let's go ahead and set a height request. And that height request could be something like 50, which once we see how it is in the app, we can change it from there. And then we can apply a corner radius to it for something like half the height, which will give us those nice rounded corners. So that's 25. And the next thing we want is text color. And this is going to be that static resource of the gradient end color. And then I just press save and mine is set to auto reformat. So let me actually just control Z that so that um, all of our properties are kind of lined up and it's easier for you guys to read. Everything else in here is the same as it used to be. The only thing we change is the background color, uh, height and corner radius, and then the text color. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and use this button. So I'm going to press save and it's gonna reformat again. So under our login entry for the password, we need a forgot password button. So we can go up to the namespaces and we need to bring in that button namespace. So under has navigation bar, seems like a good place. We'll just say XML and S, and we can use buttons for the namespace name. And then we just say buttons again, and it's gonna give us the two options like in our project, we have viewmodels.buttons and we have views.buttons. So we want views.buttons. And then we can go ahead and use that. So we can type buttons here and it'll let us use our bindable button, which is the default button we have. But one thing we do need to do is in this instance and the use phone number instance, we need to remove that background. So background color is going to be transparent. Uh, we need to change the text color to white. And the height isn't going to quite be as big, but we'll set the height once we run the app to see how it looks. Uh, but one thing we do know is we want the horizontal options to just be end. And we'll give it a width request of something like 80 for now. And then when we run the app, we can change it accordingly. Just like all of our bindable buttons, this one needs a binding context, which we don't have in the view model yet, but we'll create. So this binding context will just be set to binding and this will just be forgot password model. I'll go ahead and put some spaces between the login entry views and our three buttons. So the next button we need is going to be for the login. So we're not gonna change the background color or the text color. Um, we don't need to set the height but we do need the horizontal options to be center and expand and maybe some width request as well. But I think all of our buttons that are gonna look like this are gonna be the same. So we're gonna do that in the bindable button itself. So for now, bindable button, uh, let's set its binding context. And this will be set to binding login model is fine. 
and we'll leave it like that for now because we're going to do all the other changes over in the bindable button view itself so that it applies to all uses of this button. The last button we need is that phone number so we can say buttons bindable button again. This binding context is going to be set to something like use phone model. Again we need to set the background color to transparent and we'll set the text color to white again. This one needs a horizontal options of center and expand should work. And then we can go ahead and run the app and see what it looks like. So we see with the app running, we don't have the text for any of the three buttons we just added because those binding context button models aren't created. Uh, but we also see that this white login button is bigger than it needs to be. And so we can just fix that now. So we'll go to the bindable button and we're going to set its default width request to something like 220 and we can press save. And now we see that all of them that don't have sort of a fill and expand, which is the default horizontal options behavior, are going to look right. So let's go ahead and set this one from horizontal options fill and expand and we'll change that to something like center and expand. And so that'll be the default for these buttons now. So with that being the default, we can head back to the login page. And we no longer need center and expand on the use phone number button because that's the default horizontal options now. So we can remove that and press save. And now the next thing we need to do is go into our page model and set up these button models. So let's go over to the login page model and we'll create a couple button models. There will be three of them. So we need a, we don't need to make a private and public because these aren't going to change. The button model is going to be initiated in the constructor and then just properties on it will change. So these can just be public, just like the login entry view models above. So we'll do public button model and we'll use a quick fix to bring in the namespace for our view models dot buttons. And then we can do our forgot password model. We can create another one for our login model. And we can create that third one for the use phone model. Once you have those three there, we can go into the constructor and beneath the login entry view model instantiations, we can do the same for the button models. So let's start with forgot password model and we'll say equals a new button model. And now button model is going to want some kind of title. And so this one is going to be forgot password. It'll want an action. So what to do when they click it. And so we'll just say on forgot password. And then the last two properties are default properties. So they have a value already is visible. True is enabled true. And both of those will stay true. So we don't have to set them. Now we can use a quick fix and that'll generate this method for us. And now we'll do the same thing for the other two. So we'll do login model equals new button model. And this one will just be log in. It needs an action as well. So we'll just say on login. And again, we don't need to set those last two parameters. So we can just close the constructor, use a quick fix to generate the method and move on to use phone model. So use phone model is going to be the same exact way, except it's going to be use phone number. And its action will be, I think if we scroll down, we see go to phone login. So that's what we're going to use that. So go to phone login. Now we're mainly focusing on UI. So let's go ahead and remove these throws. So the app doesn't crash if we accidentally click these buttons and then we can rerun the app to make sure it looks correct. Now with our app running, we can see that all of them have the text that we assigned to them, but we have a couple issues. So the first one is the with request on the forgot password is only 80. And so perhaps it should be something like 140. And that fixes that. Uh, the next thing is the default font. So the default font is just the regular and it seems like it needs to be a little more bold. So we'll head back over to bindable button.xaml and we'll change it from this Nunito regular to maybe Nunito black. So we'll check our fonts. We have this, let's start with bold. Let's see what bold looks like. And we'll save. And I'm just gonna check what black looks like to see if it's even a little more bold. Cause we also have extra bold. All right, so black is more bold. It's probably what we're gonna go with. Let's try extra bold. Oh, so black is even more bold than extra bold. I think we will stick with extra bold. So I changed the font in the bindable button XAML from Nunito regular to Nunito extra bold. And so that gives us something that looks a little closer to our designs. And now in here, we don't really want our forgot password to be that extra bold. We want it to go back to regular. So on the bindable button 
that is bound to the forgot password model. Let's go ahead and set its font family specifically to Nunito regular. And so that will put that back to where we want it to go. The last thing we're going to want to do is give this stack layout some margin. So I'm going to choose something like 20 all the way around and press save. But if we notice our designs, those margins on the left and right are actually pretty large and the entries actually line up with the sides of the buttons. So let's go ahead and set the with request on just something like the email entry to see what it would look like. And so if we just say with request and we do something like 220, which is how big our button is and save it did nothing and so I think we need to set the horizontal options to something like center and there we go so that'll put that the same size as the login button and so I'll do the same for the password entry and if it looks good and right then we're going to just set it on the login entry itself so we don't have to keep repeating this so that does almost look right but I think the better approach would be to set this stack layout to that width be just simply because the forgot password, then we're applying these margins to everything. And I don't think we necessarily need to do that. So I'm going to reset what we did there. And then on the stack layout, instead of margins, I don't think we need that. I think we just need a width request of something like 220 and a horizontal option of center. And now if we press save, everything will fit right in there like we want. Another thing I see here is that the email or the entry placeholder um, there's a kind of a large space between that and its underline and we can fix that by going to the login entry view and we can just change row spacing in the grid to something small like zero and so that should tighten that up a little and now if we rerun our app uh, because that'll break some of the animations with that hot reload so if we rerun our app we should see that clicking into these entries the animation is still working uh, and now let's go ahead and compare it next to our design to see if there's anything we're missing. So just a quick glance at the design, we can see that there's a pretty large margin here up top and that um, this password field is basically center. So the, the bottom of it is basically center. And one way we can do this is to remove the margins on this image and it's in the stack layout so we can give it an end and expand and we can give the use phone number a start and expand on the vertical options and that should squish everything to the center. So on the login page, we'll remove the margins, at least the top and bottom. And so that'll leave us with 20 on the left and right and zero on the top and bottom. And now this image is going to have a vertical options set to end and expand. And so that should push everything way down all the way to the bottom. And now if we put a start and expand on that use phone number button, it should smush everything into the middle. So we'll just use vertical options on the start on use phone number. We'll just do start and expand. And when we press save, everything should go to the middle where we want it. So now another quick compare. We can see that there's a pretty decent size space between the icon and the first entry, that email entry. So with that, we can just do something like give this image a bottom margin. So we can do like 20 left, zero top, 20 right, and something like 40 bottom. So if we do 40 bottom, let's see how that changes. Now we can see that that's starting to look a lot closer to the design, so that is good. I'm happy with the way this looks, so we can jump over to the page model and we can start hooking up these three buttons. So their actions already exist, but we don't really have a way to log in right now. And to move forward, we do need a way to log in. So let's go over to our login page model. And on login, we are already have this method written, actually. So if we go into our login email page model, we'll see that we have a do login action already created and we're going to end up getting rid of this page. So we can just kind of copy from here and then we'll delete the page when we're all the way done with it. But for now, let's go ahead and copy this do login action, everything in between. So from var login all the way through the else, we'll just copy it. And then in our login page model, we'll paste it in here. And now we have a couple issues. So this needs to be an asynchronous method and that'll fix the errors with these two awaits. And the next thing we need to do is bring in account service. So if we go into the constructor where we have a declaration for navigation service, let's go ahead and say we also need account service. So I account service, and you can call it whatever you want. I'll just call mine account service. This is just a parameter in the constructor. Uh, the important one is 
what you call it with the underscore when it's a class level data member. And so we can call this one account service with an underscore and we can just set it equal to account service. A quick fix will bring in that I account service and that should get rid of the error in our on login. If it doesn't, go ahead and check the spelling. Make sure they are spelled correctly and that should get rid of that. The last thing is this username and password. So username is going to be from our email entry view model. So we can just say email entry view model dot text. And then password comes from the password entry view model dot text. And so that gets rid of all the errors. And now we should be able to run our app, use our login page and get to the dashboard the way we did before we started the redesign. With our app running, we can go ahead and log in with the test user and we'll see that our entries have the font that we want and when we click log in, it'll attempt to log in and it'll send us to our dashboard page. We have a lot of work to do on this, so that is what we're gonna get working on next. I think that's a good stopping point for today's video. If you like the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. Thank you for watching the Xamarin Forms tutorial. I'm Patrick, and this is the Let's Create series.